Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I thought I would share with you my process for creating a sketchbook spread. And I've split it into three parts. So it should be really simple for you to see how I build up the illustrations in layers. So the first part is just painting the basic shapes. I go straight into the piece without any pencil drawings and that's pretty intentional because I think sometimes if I take too long with my pencil drawing, try and plan it all out, I kind of lose that spontaneity and I also lose a lot of time as well that way. And when I'm sketching outside or on location, I want to kind of sketch what is there in front of me and I want to do it quickly and I want to capture what is there because otherwise it will, the moment will pass and I will have missed it. That's why you see I go straight into my pages. I've stuck to just using the primaries. I thought that would be a nice challenge just to simplify things a bit as well. Um, sometimes having too many colours to choose from can again bog you down, slow you down. So I just thought I'm going to just use two reds, two yellows, two blues and then mix my own colours from there. For this sketch actually I'm using watercolours from Arteza. Um, I wanted to try them out. I run quite a few workshops and so I wanted to find some paints that were good quality but also at a good price so that when I recommend what products my students can buy I at least know that I've tried these um, supplies out and so far they seem to be pretty good. They're very um, bright, they seem to mix really well and have a translucency about them which is really nice. They don't seem to be too muddy either, the colours are, yeah the colours work well. I would definitely recommend buying yourself um, a pack if you're looking to start using watercolours. This, just so you know, this is not sponsored by Arteza, I bought these um, watercolour tubes myself. So as you can see I've got all of the basic shapes now on the page and now it is time for me to start working on the details. I really like using watercolour pencils to add the detail, maybe a bit of texture. So you'll see on the egg that I'm just doing an outline and then I'm going to add these little dots which are really um, just to add a little bit more character and because watercolour pencils are water soluble um, it means that if I don't like a line or something I can easily um, put a bit of water on it and it will blend away. I can also um, choose pencils which are quite close to the colour that I've um, used and I think that's really nice. It just adds a little bit more definition. I particularly like using green um, line work over leaves. Just kind of gives it a little bit of something special I find anyway.
also find it useful to add the writing, the lettering with watercolour pencils as well. Watercolour pencils are a little bit softer than using, you know, a fine liner. I also love adding little splats and spots and textures and that is what I tend to do once I've done my details. I always think that you never really make a mistake, um, especially if you're using watercolour because it will blend into the background. So the third and final part is then adding the lettering. I love adding lettering, especially, you know, in your own handwriting. I just think it really adds to the personality of the piece. And because it's your handwriting, it's, it's going to look unique to you. So I'm using a, a Sailor Feud pen, um, fountain pen. It has got a refillable cartridge, so it means that all I need to do is just uh, put it in the ink and it will, it will draw up the ink. Yeah, it's uh, got an angle on it. I think it's 45 degrees. And so it means that the nib can either be used um, flat on the page or you can turn it over and get a thinner line. I really like the ability to be able to do that, to change the thickness of the line. It gives a lot more variety than, than just using a fine liner, which is very um, one dimensional. As you can see, I love to add my line work to the different um, elements on the page. Sometimes I will um, partially put the line in and then leave the other bit. Um, just because, again, I love having a bit of contrast between the colour pencils, the watercolour and the line. And you can see now that all of those three elements start to all work together to create um, just a lovely illustrated spread. Stay close when it rains, let me keep parts of you. I also love just drawing it with the pen and adding that garlic bulb at the bottom there. Um, I felt it just needed something in that space, so that's why I thought I'd draw that one in. So yeah, rather annoyingly I spelt omelette wrong, which, um, yeah, it's a bit unfortunate. I should have really double checked that, but you know, it still looks all right. Just remember guys to check your spelling before you do it. <laughs> a lesson learned for me. As you can see, I'll just finish it off by adding a few more swishes and washes, um, again, just to give a little bit more texture to the page so it's not um, just bright white. I just think it just adds to it. And there we go, a fully illustrated double page spread. Ingredients to make an omelette. I hope you really enjoyed this guys. If this is something that you really liked, please give it a thumbs up and maybe comment. I would really love to hear your thoughts and whether you'd like to see more of this kind of video. For one thing, it gives me an opportunity to show you what's going on in my sketchbook and also how I work and what my process is. And maybe that would be good for you two guys to hear about. 
So do let me know in the comments below. I hope you're having a great week and I will see you again soon.